the future. Princess Elizabeth is 18 years old on the 21st of April, and the date is a milestone in our constitution, for she will then assume the dignities and responsibilities of heir presumptive to the throne. But even as the camera gets ready to go riding with the grown-up princess and her younger sister, doesn't your mind start indulging in a few cliches, like how time flies, and seems only yesterday that they were so high, the sort of remark that quite rightly annoys all young people, well, let's dismiss reflections and concentrate on the present. It's a spring morning at the King's house in the country, and Princess Elizabeth is mounted on the brown pony, Jock, while Princess Margaret rides Hans, a typical Norwegian dun. There's still a nip in the air, and the invigorating exercise is enjoyed by Jock, evidently a Scotsman, quite as much as by the princess herself. If responsibilities of higher state seem far removed on this brisk morning, they are nevertheless a very near prospect. From now on, the princess will undertake many more public engagements. She will become a member of the Council of State when the king is out of the kingdom. She will, in fact, begin to assume all the duties and tasks that fall to royalty. Now the ponies are reined in for the return ride. The two sisters, dressed alike, in riding jackets with blue handkerchiefs around their heads. The cowl effect is certainly very becoming to their lively young faces. As they turn in from their ride, the king, meeting them, has a bantering word with Jock. Jock and Hans were picked by the king for his daughters. They live out in the rough, that's to say in the fields, and are caught and saddled each day for their ride. The princesses ride either of them, as you'll see presently when they swap over. Now the ponies are called upon to do their tricks, and Princess Elizabeth persuades Hans to stand on the tub and pose for the camera. The reward is a mouthful of bran. Princess Margaret follows with Jock. Unsaddling is all part of a good rider's routine, and the princess brought up on the right principles. Leaving their ponies, they go over to call on three foals in an adjoining paddock. Oh! Come on! Come on! Daddy! 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 Dandy is the brown foal and a limelight colt at that. Dandy being short for dandelion. The other two are Odd and Rolf, Norwegians. Odd is persuaded to offer a leg in greeting. But isn't there something to give them to eat? Where's the bran? Ah, somebody's found it. And since Ching has been helping himself, Crackers must have his share too. Every film of the royal family tells the same story, the story of a happy and united family. Princess Elizabeth's upbringing has been solicitously watched over by her parents. There must be the same thrill to them as to all parents in seeing their children growing up and in feeling that the principles by which they have been influenced are being justified in the result. The nation shares this happiness. The pattern of monarchy set by the king and his father and their two queens is evidently understood and appreciated by the next generation. Yes, we all look forward with sympathetic and pleasurable expectation to the part to be played by Princess Elizabeth in the future welfare of this great country and empire.